after a uh, very cold week and uh, a mild case of the flu, it is now time to uh, test the old Kerger again and uh, find out if my uh, improvements and uh, repairs have uh, worked out. Let's uh, start with a uh, speed test, see how far my uh, calculations are off. I'll set it uh, to 10 Hz. This way we know uh, immediately how many RPMs a, uh, a 10 Hz increment is. Eighty five uh, RPM, and that's a bit faster than the uh, eighty RPM I uh, expected, but it's pretty close. Ten hertz, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety. A hundred. At about 70 hertz the motor starts uh, vibrating and uh, you can really hear that. It's probably an unbalance but it might also be the uh, bearings working themselves loose again in the uh, housing. Not sure. Um, nothing I can do about this for now. But uh, I guess I will start looking for a better motor. Now let's do a uh, headstock tailstock alignment test. And that's something uh, I wasn't able to test before because of the uh, tailstock damage. Um, a problem I fixed a long time ago by cutting a new Morse taper into the uh, tailstock ram. I set the uh, top slide to 30 degrees using my uh, trusty uh, protractor. The uh, scale on the uh, cross slide is uh, pretty much unreadable, just like uh, my other leaf. I'm running at 60 hertz. I adjusted the tool height. I think that was pretty good. Let's see how things line up. That doesn't look very good. Let's uh, fix the uh, tailstock, see if that makes a difference. Nope. Nope. I don't think I can hold the scale between that. I think uh, my eyes are uh, deceiving me. That uh, worked better than expected. We should uh, center drill something. I think it's probably a good idea to line up the top slide uh, while I still have that uh, freshly turned uh, pointy bit in the chuck. As you can see my uh, test uh, indicator stand uh, finally arrived. It only took uh, well, five months longer than the uh, indicator itself, but it's here. 
and it's a lot more convenient to set up than my uh, big old Mac base. I think this is good enough. As you can see, the uh, chuck is running much better than during the uh, previous test. I think it had uh, about 3 tenth run out before. And you can read through this chuck using these uh, adjustment screws. This is actually uh, quite an interesting chuck. It was uh, made using a uh, patent uh, by a uh, Dutch inventor from uh, 1946. Let's uh, phase off this uh, test piece and then I can finally do that uh, center drill test. Still running at uh, 60 Hz. It's a bit rough. Looks like a bit of uh, metal welded itself to the uh, to the tool bit. Better, but uh, far from perfect. I have no idea what kind of material this is. So, um, this is pretty good. Let's uh, send it. That was still 60 Hz, but the uh, motor starts to uh, well, vibrate. Well, the show must go on. Slowing it down to 50 hertz. It might be uh, working itself a bit loose. Center drilling worked fine, but uh, I have a new problem. I've uh, tightened up the uh, bolts that uh, hold down the electric motor. Hopefully uh, that helped. Here we go. It may have helped a little. And this here is a 10mm uh, drill of uh, questionable quality. Here we go. And I'll slow down the lathe to 30Hz. Uh,
Let's see if it uh, still works at 20 hertz. Let's uh, check 10 hertz as well. I doubt that this uh, will work. The uh, motor is uh, starting to object. It's moaning a little. But we're still drilling. At these uh, slow speeds, uh, you probably gotta be careful not to overheat the motor. And it might need an extra fan for cooling. Let's speed it up again. All right, that went better than expected. One more uh, challenge. This is an uh, 18 millimeter tapered drill bit. Twenty hertz. So far, so good. The uh, camera battery died, but the hole got drilled uh, without any problem. I'm sorry you guys uh, missed uh, seeing and uh, hearing that. Anyway, I. Uh, Stop testing now, because I know enough and uh, the motor vibration problem seems to be getting worse. The lathe on the other hand uh, seems to work fine, at least just as good as my uh, other old lathe. And I was uh, kinda surprised with the amount of power that was available at a uh, low frequency. Although it uh, might not do so well when the uh, workpiece has a uh, bigger uh, diameter. But uh, I think I should be able to improve the uh, low end power by selecting an uh, other uh, fault hertz curve in the uh, frequency drive. But for that uh, I need to uh, study the manual. I'm going to open up the motor again. Maybe I can uh, improve it a bit. But I think I will need to look for another one. And I'm also going to try and uh, improve the uh, mounting situation. Because uh, a wooden riser block and uh, a wooden bench, I don't think it's uh, rigid enough. If I keep this motor and pulley it will need to be turned down because um, you can already see uh, the belt wearing on the side and that's not good I will also uh, need to switch to a uh, thicker uh, oil because the uh, ISO uh, 68 uh, hydraulic oil the same as I'm using on my uh, other lathe it just uh, runs out too quickly there really is nothing that uh, keeps the uh, oil inside the bearings they are completely open on both sides. I'm uh, probably going to use uh, uh, some sort of uh, molybdenum grease, but uh, I still haven't decided yet. Anyway, that's it for me. To be continued. In the next video, I'm going to use the sliding spindle threading mechanism to make a rather useless spindle nose thread protector.